So, a very rainy, windy Oregon day here. And we have three items to go over today. First of all, we are going to pick a winner for the Orchid Mantis. Um, as promised, if we had reached 30 watch hours on yesterday's video, as well as 30 watch hours uh, in the prior video, I was going to pick another Orchid Mantis winner. Um, we didn't quite reach the 30 hours for yesterday's video, but I'm going to give you guys a pass on that for a couple of reasons. Um, number one, I posted it on a Thursday, and it's only been 24 hours, and those are probably aren't the best watch days for um, making a request like that, so perhaps a little bit unfair. Um, you guys did contribute 25.7 watch hours. Uh, I think there were only, there were under 200 views. Um, and uh, that's fine. Uh, you guys had in the prior video, there were uh, more than enough extra watch hours to where if I add the watch hours for the first video and the second video together, um, we came up well above 30. And so I'm very happy with those results and I want to thank you. So thank you very much for watching my videos and hitting the like button. It means a lot to me. And so that's the first thing that we're going to do, um, is pick a winner for another Orchid Mantis. This was the contest within a contest. And then uh, the next thing that we're going to do is we are going to announce the new contest. I'm going to try to do a new contest for you guys every Friday. And um, the first place prize for this new contest will be... Um, another Orchid Mantis because it beat out Blue Death Feigning Beetle for the most votes in uh, the comments section in our last video where I asked you guys what you wanted the first place prize to be. Um, Blue Death Feigning Beetles are pretty much always available through my website and so I think you guys made the right choice in choosing the Orchid Mantis again because those are always available and rarely available in limited supplies. So, and then there are a couple of their contest prizes for this new contest um, that I'll be talking about. And then the third thing is I'm going to, later in this video, wrap up the question and answer contest. Um, not, not a contest anymore, but I'm just posting the remaining answers to your questions from the prior contest. And so it's kind of all a lot to work through perhaps, but we're going to take it all one word at a time and one section at a time here, beginning with choosing a winner for the Orchid Mantis. So let's go here to the comment picker. I want to thank Luce again for suggesting this um, website here. It's going to make me selecting winners a lot easier. And so I have the URL from the original Orchid Mantis video where we had a little over a thousand views. Very happy with that number. 185 people hit the thumbs up button. And uh, there were 392 comments. And so what I'm going to do is um, pop in the URL from that. It's going to tell us that there, we're filtering out the duplicate users. And so a lot of those comments were my own. It says that there were 190 unique commenters. We're filtering out anybody who commented twice, for example. And then the next step here is to hit this start button and it will tell us who the winner of the contest within a contest Orchid Mantis is. And if you don't know what I mean by that, it's because you didn't really watch the last video and that's fine. It doesn't really matter, basically, um, one more person than the original contest promised is going to be a winner for an Orchid Mantis. And here we go. The winner of the Orchid Mantis is Aaron C., who asked, do you have a hard time keeping your habitats moist enough in the winter? And I think later in this video, I answered that question, so that's good timing. Um, thank you, Aaron C. and everybody else for participating in that last contest. Aaron, please contact me through my website, 
my email, peter at bugsincyberspace.com or on Instagram um, or however you can reach me. Uh, even in the comments down here, I will probably see it. So uh, thank you guys again, and let's proceed to the new contest. So in the new contest, I'm going to grab a couple materials here. In the new contest, the first place prize will be an orchid mantis because I still have some left and that's what you guys wanted to be the first place prize per the comments. The second place prize for this contest was donated by the Portland Insectarium and they're a local company that uh, they call themselves a, a mobile insectarium and so they show up at various events with their bugs. Um, they recently had a table at the Oregon Museum of Science and Industry, OMSI, here. And they show off live and dead insect collections and just educate uh, the local community about bugs. And this is a coloring book, one of their many products. They also have some stickers that they gave to me that I'll be putting out in future contests. Some really great stickers, but I don't want to confuse you by showing them to you now. Um, Jessica is the owner of this company, and she works for me here at Bugs in Cyberspace as well. Um, this is the coloring book, and she draws pictures for uh, Bugs in Cyberspace customers pretty frequently, and we put those in the packages sometimes. And uh, she is a wonderful biological illustrator, and I'll thumb through a few pages here a coloring book for children or I mean my mother is in her 70s and she spends a good portion of the day every day coloring and so there are also some activities in this book and it this is uh, mostly based on local Oregon species I think so um, here's an Oregon tiger beetle and uh, our local orb weaver spider um, there is an Oregon uh, rain beetle here and it's a connect the dot puzzle and so just some different fun activities um, here's one I really like the false black widow our local steatota grossa spider which ranges throughout much of the country but a little maze there on the abdomen of it so lots of lots of cool things in this coloring book that's the second place prize and then the third place prize speaking of black widows is this sticker by Shapes and Nature, shapesandnature.com. Uh, by the way, you can also find the PDX Insectarium at pdxinsectarium.org. PDX is the abbreviation for our local airport here in Portland, Oregon. And at shapesandnature.com, lots of wonderful bug stickers. Uh, they do other animals. There's a leafy sea dragon. It's one of my favorite things that they've done. It's beautiful. They make a shirt out of it as well as stickers, and they have new products every single week, I swear. So anyway, a very cool sticker for you uh, arachnid enthusiasts out there. Now, I'm just gonna kind of, this is not scripted or anything, never is. Um, I'm gonna see if I can work through how to explain the, how this next contest works for you. Um, this is going to be a video contest. Um, in the same, in the last contests we had, I was taking questions from you, you guys typed them out, and then I videotaped myself answering the questions. And I hope that was interesting and entertaining for you. I certainly enjoyed it. Um, and that is probably my preferred kind of contest, although I haven't done a lot of the contests here on YouTube. I do them on Instagram, which doesn't allow me, um, the same kind of opportunities that YouTube do, does in terms of length and uh, camera time where I can um, talk at length or um, show video. So what I want to do this time just to kind of mix it up a little bit and uh, I think you guys will enjoy this at least as much if not more is uh, get into videotaping some of the species that I keep here. And so I'm going to ask you in the comments down below for this video to make a suggestion for um, a, an insect or a pet bug of any kind, millipedes, centipedes, arachnids, um, anything that you think I might have 
that you would like to see a short video clip of where maybe I describe the animal a little bit. I'm going to keep the formatting kind of loose as to how I make the video. All I'm asking of you is that you make a suggestion in the comments down below, as well as be a subscriber, as well as click that thumbs up like button right there. These are important things for me, for each person that is eligible uh, to be a winner in the contest. And so um, there could be a little strategy involved in all of this. Um, many of you who are not familiar with my shop.bugs in cyberspace.com website may not know what bugs I have around all the time. If you've only been watching me on YouTube, you might think that I only have question mark roaches and giant cave roaches and vinegaroons and blue death painting beetles and orchid mantises, but I actually have a lot more than that. And so people who are familiar with my website and what is listed on there and maybe what is in stock on that website now might have an advantage over other people because if something because if somebody suggests something like let, let's say um you know you ask for uh, a stick insect of some kind i have no stick insects so if you request that i make a video of a stick insect i won't be able to do that and so you will have disqualified yourself from the contest by suggesting something that I'm not able to take a picture of. However, it's a little more complicated than that because um, people who have been customers of mine may have a little bit of an advantage in getting me to make a video of something through a suggestion because they know how my website operates. And I, I won't say any more than that, but um, you will do yourselves a favor if you go to my website and kind of browse around and then make a suggestion on the basis of what you see there. Now, I will say further that um, one of the other strategies here is to make a suggestion perhaps, I'm not gonna say which way it's gonna go, but um, you may suggest something that, you, uh, that is very common um, that would then put, put you in a pool of people. For example, it's, it's conceivable that a lot of people are gonna say blue death painting beetle because they're not gonna go to the website, they're just gonna say that. Well, if I decide that I'm going to make a video of a blue death painting beetle, and I should say at this point that I'm going to pick seven um, species to make a video of once it's all said and done. And you guys have until uh, Sunday night um, to make your suggestions. Um, and then at that time, I'm going to look through all of the results and I'm going to pick seven of them to make videos of. So if, um, 20 people say blue death feigning beetle, and then I make a video of a blue death feigning beetle, um, or my colony of them, that is going to put you in a pool of 20 people to compete with for one of these prizes. So... Um, and, and the way that's going to work is I'm going to go to a random number generator and I'm going to, you know, set it up from 1 to 20. I will have assigned the name of each person for, you know, those 20 things. Um, and I'm going to hit the, you know, the generate button on it again. It's going to pick you. I'm going to correlate that back to your name. So you have a 1 in 20th chance if you suggest Blue Death Penny Beetle. So that may present an opportunity in terms of strategy for people to, um, you know, pick something that is a little bit off the wall or something unique that you think nobody else will suggest. So I'm going to let you guys figure out the strategy on all of that. Um, so I'm going to make seven video clips of seven species. And um, within that, I'm going to use the random number generator because there's only three prizes. I'm going to um, pick those that we're, we're going to have three winners for that. So, um, and then within that, depending on how many people made the suggestion of those three things, like if it was the blue death painting beetle, we're going to use the random gem number generator again to uh, pick the winners within those. So um, I'm going to give you guys a little bit of a hint here and say that um, for me, it's always a combination of what inspires me and also what I think people want to see. So, you know, if like 
a uh, hundred people say Blue Death Fame Beetle, I'm gonna be like, I gotta do it. I gotta do it for these guys because they wanna see them, even though I have Blue Death Fame Beetle videos already that you guys can go and check out, uploaded here, a couple of them to my YouTube channel. So um, that's basically it for the contest. Um, if you guys have any questions about that, feel free to ask them in the comments down below because I just kind of, this, you know, this is, uh, I just kind of threw all this out here and kind of thought about it as I was uh, uh, speaking in front of the camera. So um, with that, we are going to move on to the third portion of this video where I answer questions that people asked in the last contest. Uh, thank you all for participating. Uh, I will watch for your comments about uh, which things to keep and I will actually start making some of the videos probably here even before the contest ends because when something moves me, it moves me and I have to balance out my workload. So know that I'm going to be working on all of this as you guys are making your suggestions, but I will probably leave at least half of the videos for the very last moment and then I hope to uh, publish the video with some results. Um, haven't decided yet whether I'm going to announce all of the winners in the Monday video or if I'm going to spread them out a little bit. It just kind of depends on um, how long my videos are and whether I want to break the results up into a couple clips or whether I want to uh, condense it all into one video. I think in terms of views and my own goals, it would probably, um, this is a learning process for me. This is all new for me, you see. And so I think I would like to put it all in one video on Monday. And then maybe somewhere in the middle of the week, like Wednesday, I will do another video that doesn't relate to a contest. And then when we come back to Friday again, I will um, launch another contest. So figuring this all out as we go and it's a lot of fun and uh, I'm, I'm enjoying um, the interactivity of all of this so thank you very much starting out this video by showing you some ghost mantises green form female and a brown form female Pop these little ones up on my hat here. You can see that it's daytime now. I did probably an hour and a half, no more like two hours of answers last night. And it was dark behind us. And you can see that I uh, have a different shirt on because it's a new day. And we are going to resume answering questions here for the Orchid Mantis video now. The next question was, how long have you been keeping mantises? They've had them for two years now, and they think they have great personality. I discussed mantis personality a little bit in a recent video. Um, I've been keeping mantises as pets probably since... Mm, the mid-90s, I would say, uh, I started with the local species, the European mantises. They are established here in Oregon and through much of the country, uh, particularly on the coasts, I think. And that is, uh, that is Mantis religiosa. That's the scientific name for them. They're from Europe originally, but they have established here like so many other things, like the pill bugs and sow bugs that we see in our backyards, for example, the roly polies. Those are not from this country originally. They're not native here. Next question. I love orchid mantises. However, jumping spiders are my favorite. What are the best starter bugs? Um, I think I've answered that already for these videos. I've seen this a lot in your Instagram posts and I always wondered, how do you get the flies to stay on you and crawl instead of fly away? <laughs> um, you know, so many people ask that question. Uh, I benefit by the question in terms of the algorithms to the point where I don't answer it. But if you continue to watch my account 
Um, and if you watch some of the fly videos that I will be posting here on YouTube soon, you will see the, uh, the uh, simple and obvious answer to the question through watching those videos. So stay tuned for a house fly video that I will be posting soon. And I guess I'll take the opportunity to say, or click this card up here, because I will put a card there where you can click and watch that video when I make it. I've already made the video actually, I just haven't edited it and posted it yet. So, uh, question is, what's the best feeder for the orchid once it is grown? Um, I would say that the best feeder are large adult moths. I catch moths outside and I feed them because I feel like they are the most natural, nutritious feeders. Lots of people have concerns about uh, parasites um, by using wild-caught feeders. I don't share those same concerns because in my experience, um, it's never happened to me where something was parasitized uh, or a mantis, for example, that I fed something that was parasized to ended up acquiring the parasite and dying because of it. Um, I have seen cases of that happening because the internet and the world is a very big place and things like that do happen. But, um, you know, that's like being afraid of going outside because you might be struck by lightning. Um, you're just as likely to be struck by it in your house. <laughs> so that's how I feel about that. Uh, uh, blue bottle flies are an excellent feeder too, although they are a little more difficult to source. I do feed roaches and crickets to my adult orchid mantises. Um, I try to use crickets that I have flushed the systems of. If, uh, if I were to purchase them from a pet store, which I never do, um, I often purchase crickets in uh, bulk amounts to use as feeders um, also for the couple reptiles that I have. Um, so I generally have them around. And uh, for an adult mantis that really needs a big, uh, a, a, you know, a gut load of food, um, I will uh, use healthy crickets that I've fed with fruits and vegetables and pet foods and things like that to make sure that they are healthy. Um, my favorite or the most creative do-it-yourself heating system for inverts that I've seen Oh man, you're asking about uh, so many years of experience. Um, I don't, I don't, I can't think of anything right offhand. I will say that I routinely, um, I enjoy having some reptiles where uh, there are heat lamps on top of their cages on my wire racks in uh, my bug rooms uh, because uh, the heat generated from the lizard tanks, like my bearded dragon, for example, will uh, rise above and heat all of the bugs on the shelves above. So. I would say that's rather creative, um, if not very imaginative. Uh, not very interesting in terms of an answer, but uh, we'll leave it there. What is the funniest moment you've encountered with a mantis? Uh, I don't know, I, I don't have a, a great answer to that. Uh, one of the only times, if not the only time I've per personally witnessed a mantis uh, biting a person was when uh, I was making a video with Jessica who works for me and she was holding the mantis and uh, it's a really great video because the mantis, uh, if I remember it correctly, because we've made a lot of videos, but it was a Hiridula venosa, the golden Hiridula, golden giant Asian mantis, if you will. Um, and it was a two-tone specimen with a beautiful pale yellow on the wings and then the thorax and head were green and she happened to be wearing those same matching colors that day so it was really cool to begin with because of that but um, I think uh, at one point um, it was on her hand and it started to nibble on her a little bit and mantises will sometimes do that insects millipedes lots of things will sometimes kind of give you a little bit of a taste. Even a bearded dragon will kind of lick you sometimes. And I remember, um, I remember when, if someone's wearing green, it will often sort of kind of try to bite at you like you're a piece of lettuce or something. I don't feed them lettuce, but you know, a piece of kale or whatever. But um, anyway, it, it had sort of maybe started to glean a little bit of moisture off of her hand. And sometimes when things start to um, use their mouths on a surface to take a drink, they will then kind of dig in a little bit. And if they decide that, um, you know, 
there's not a lot of liquid here maybe that maybe this is a food so it started to actually eat her <laughs> some people would say i was bitten by something but it was actually eating her and um, of course she um, she's a very patient person and she would never fling um, a mantis or a spider or anything off of her hand even if it meant losing her entire arm she's just that kind of person <laughs> but um it was it was actually eating her and i i had never seen anything like that even though um, um i own a website also called mantidforum.net the largest praying mantis community online and so i've heard people talk about mantises biting them in the past but um that uh, that was a, a real tangent there so let's get back to the game here um what's the hardest species of mantis you've ever bred um um, I talked about the devil's flower a little bit ago. Um, another species that I failed with uh, were our somewhat local, um, a dry land species called Lydonutria. Um, Lydonutria minor, in that case, is the species. And they're very small, and their babies can sit on the head of a pin. And um, at the time, I tried raising the offspring from a teeny tiny little egg case uh, on uh, Drosophila melanogaster fruit flies and those were too large for them if I and when I do it again I will use springtails. Um, scroll down here a little bit. Is it true that a mantis learns to recognize different humans? I already answered that one. Uh, why were you interested in insects um, I think I probably covered that to everybody's satisfaction already. Did I see the movie Coraline? There are many references to insects. I've not seen it. I can picture the main character cartoon in my mind. I don't watch movies and animated movies are my least interested probably of all movies, except for horror movies. I've never seen a horror movie in my life. Um, that would be an interesting topic for a future question, by the way. <laughs> All of that. How did I get into bugs? Did you ever start out being afraid of bugs when you were younger? Um, I'll, I've, I've answered the first part of it. I will answer the second part of it. Um, there are still some bugs you could say that I'm afraid of. Um, I will not hold large Asian centipedes that are not used to being held, for example. Um, because they are a bit bitey and the venom um, will uh, take its toll on you. So there you go. Uh, you can call it fear if you want to. Um, I would say that I am not particularly afraid of being bitten. I'm not particularly afraid of the suffering that comes afterwards, but it would be a real hassle because I stay really busy and I don't want to lose um, an arm and sleep and feel uncomfortable because it's unpleasant. It's not so much a fear. Um, I, I, uh, I'll just leave it there, <laughs> otherwise it'll take five minutes. What is my favorite invertebrate? I'm gonna pass on that one, I already covered it. Uh, curious about how you begin mating ghost mantises. Uh, an appropriate question. I have two of them on my hat, I believe. I have no idea where they are. Um, these two mantises, by the way, they live together in a communal tank. And so um, even though I can't see them, it's extremely unlikely that uh, one is eating the other one up there on the brim of my hat or wherever they have ended up at this point. <laughs> um, so how do I know when two adults are ready or willing to begin mating? There's sort of a rule of thumb in the hobby that you wait until the adult female, uh, you wait about two weeks after she has matured, and maturity in insects means they have gained their wings in most cases, in the cases of insects that actually have wings, which most do. And so uh, that's a good amount of time to wait. Um, you know, you wanna make sure that she's well fed, uh, you know, Two weeks isn't probably long enough, you know, that's the minimum time. So uh, introduce the male, see how things go, keep a close eye on them, pull the male out if they're not um, mating right away. Um, ghost mantises, of course, are renowned for being one of the more communal species, less aggressive towards each other. And so 
Um, you, if you have a big group of them, you know, you might leave the males and the females all together. If you have a limited number of males, or you have fed, <laughs> I say fed, if you have introduced a male into that cage before and that particular female has eaten the male, um, then you might just keep an extra close eye on things and pull the male out if things seem to be taking uh, wrong, going in a bad way. Um, what is the best way to initiate introducing them? Um, I would recommend, uh, I often get like a pencil or a pair of forceps or something and I feed the female while she is feeding. I put the male up near her back. I sort of gauge his response. If he shows interest in her, often his antennae will vibrate back and forth. Um, uh, or another thing is he might just like say, no way, I don't want none of this. She's, she's not ready, <laughs> I'm not ready, and he'll bolt or turn and fly or, you know, something like that. So, you know, you just gotta watch. Um, what sparked my interest in bugs? I've had a fascination with them since I was born. I covered that already. Um, these are, it's a great question, but since I've already answered it um, a few times over, probably I'm going to move on. Um, I understand that you guys aren't reading every other person's question on the page, so fair enough. Um, I'm going to take the opportunity. This person um, doubled down on these negative comments, and so I'm just going to mention this. This person here, I won't say their name, but I'm going to leave their comment up there. And I'm not going to hit the like button on it or the uh, thumbs up button on it. I want to get some orchid mantises so I can pinch their arms. I love doing that to them. My sister had some as a kid, and I loved pinching them. You know, I was thinking at first, in the first sentence here, that this is just a child and we excuse the behavior of children. Um, I sometimes behave badly myself, but um, then he went on to say that his sister had some when she was a kid, which makes it sound like he's older now. And so he's probably just a troll that is trying to induce us into, um, you know, responding or something, but I'm not going to respond in text. I will respond just to let you guys know that, you know, it is my preference when we all see comments like this that we ignore them. Um, even though it would be good in terms of the algorithm if I, um, you know, asked all of you to go and attack this person and leave lots of comments and, you know, put them in their place or whatever you want to call it. Um, you know, I, I try to spread love in the hobby, a love for bugs and a love for people. And so, um, you know, I'm going to leave it up there uh, just because I'm using it as an example here uh, for how I like to behave and how I like the people who subscribe to my account to behave. Um, you know, it's, it's about tolerance and understanding that, you know, we're not going to get anywhere with this person if we beat them down, we come down on them for the uh, views that they have that we disagree with. Um, maybe as many people in the past have done through watching my account and the way I interact with bugs and how I revere them. And um, they see that there's lots of other people just like me who feel the same way about bugs. Maybe through exposing themselves through this account, they will start to develop a reverence or a, a small respect at least for them at all. And they will understand through all of that that maybe their comments um, you know, they, they don't bring them the feelings that they want to have um, as they go through life. So, um, long comments here. Question, is a square glass enclosure about a foot by half a foot on each side okay for raising an orchid mantis? Um, assuming it, oh, read more, gotta click that. Assuming it is the pro has the proper substrate and something to help it molt, or is a mesh enclosure the best? Okay, good question. Um, if your mantis is a nymph, um, an immature specimen, the glass cage is better than the mesh enclosure because mesh enclosures are very airy. Um, ventilation um, in combination goes hand in hand with humidity. If it's a highly ventilated cage, you really need to be spraying in there all the time or else your mantis will have trouble molting. There's a care sheet on my website. I always, you know, it's a couple pages long. You can imagine that I took my time to type it out. I did it 10 years ago, so forgive me if it's a bit outdated. Um, 
but it's, it's more than I'm going to discuss here in the context of answering this question. So please review that and just know that um, maintaining humidity during the molting process is uh, critical for successfully uh, getting them to molt in the cage. And so a mesh environment is good for an adult mantis if uh, that's the kind of cage you want to use, the kind of cage you like. Um, but uh, the glass one is better for immatures. Um, it looks like they went on to ask numerous other questions. Um, uh, I think I'm just, because there are so many, I'm gonna move on to the next person. Um, but uh, you are Rachel, and uh, I think I actually answered an email from you a little bit ago, so we can pick up the rest of the conversation there. Is there a difference in the life expectancy and temperament of a male versus a female orchid mantis? Um, certainly there is a life expectancy difference. I noted earlier in another question that males live significantly shorter lives than female. They mature much more quickly. And that's part of the reason why they are difficult to breed is because people can't typically source them from a couple different places. They get them from one person. And then it's a game of um, raising the males up to maturity slower than the females. So, um, so uh, where was that question? Oh, and also the temperament. I mean, is there a difference in temperament? Uh, not really. I mean, yes and no. It depends on how you want to dissect the word temperament against the behaviors of males and females. Um, the temperament of a female mantis, if she is presented with a male in front of her while she is hungry, is to eat him. If the male, I forgot there was a mantis on that side. If the, put it up here. Um, if the uh, male mantis is hungry and he is presented with a female that is eight times his mass, he will, um, he will not view her as a food, he will view her as a threat. Um, I'm going to pull this mantis down here and uh, see how it's doing since I just kind of bumped it a moment ago. Uh, it's just fine, good. Um, this one has decided to move on to my glasses and uh, We'll just leave it there because it's interesting to you. You know, these questions and this video is long if you don't have some other interesting things to look at. So we'll leave them there. Um, next question. How many oatheca can one female mantis lay in her lifetime? There's no answer to that question. Um, you know, a uh, ghost mantis might lay upwards of 10 of them if she's very well fed. They're very long lived and so um, an orchid mantis won't typically live, in my experience, as long as a ghost mantis, but um, it really, it's a function of uh, keeping them warm, keeping them well fed, and um, you know, maybe how often you uh, put a male in with them to re-fertilize them. Uh, next question. I've always been interested in caring for my own collection of insects, specifically arachnids. Are there any books or other materials you would suggest for beginners? Um, you know, I mean, there, there really is nothing better than YouTube in terms of uh, long videos with lots of detail where you can see what's going on as a person explains, you know, uh, what the needs of the animal are and what the proper setup is for that animal. So, um, you know, books are wonderful. Uh, you know, you can go on Amazon and uh, you know, figure out which ones are selling the best and order those ones. But um, as much as I hate to say it, they are a little bit outdated because um, in the same way, a picture is worth a thousand words. A picture is more helpful in many cases than text. <laughs> so uh, a video, of course, is worth considerably more than a picture. Um, She's a beauty. Uh, nice to see you on YouTube, Pete. No question. Uh, Morales1370, thank you for your comment. Do you have a reason why this mantis looks like it is by evolution standards? Um, I mean, everything in evolution is, is a function of cause and effect. Um, you know, there are, there are variables in, that surround each individual organism all the time that sort of uh, decide as as well as whether a predator you know predator can see it can see a mantis 
Um, it's an, it, and it's an easy target, for example, if an orchid mantis is on the backside of this laptop, you know, if that were the natural environment for orchid mantises, they would soon, uh, black ones would over time be selected for and white ones would not. It's a complicated topic, um, but uh, it's safe to say that orchid mantises, along with the things that they co-evolve with, with the plants around them, the flowers on those plants, the predators in those environments, they look the way they do, like everything looks the way it does, because they, they, it benefited them to look more and more like they do now as time went on. And sometimes that means that it helps them to blend in well for some organisms. It means that um, it made them very attractive to their mates. And so those are a couple of the reasons why orchid mantises might look the way that they do. Um, and of course the males uh, are very, very good flyers, maybe better flyers than any other mantis I've ever kept. Uh, wondering if certain types of mantises are easier to care for than others. Um, we talked about the communal nature of these ghost mantises. Um, it, that makes it easier for people to keep them um, because they are, uh, you can keep them in the same cage, you know, that makes it easy. You put a bunch of flies or crickets or whatever, you're feeding them into a single cage and uh, that's, that's easier than feeding them in multiple cages and wondering if they ate and, and things like that. So um, what is my favorite kind of mantis? Uh, I covered that topic already. How hard are orchids to breed? I covered that topic already. What species do you recommend do I not recommend as pets? I covered that a little bit. Uh, the sun spiders, camel spiders, wind scorpions, if you will, are not great. Also, what bugs do you want to sell but you are not able to sell? Phasmids, hands down, stick insects. Um, they are regulated by the Department of Agriculture and I would love to be able to offer them in a former life before I had a business. I raised over 100 species of stick insects. Um, and uh, they are very near and dear to my heart. Uh, we had Fabeticus serotipes, um, you know, the size of a yardstick. There's a wonderful picture in the book that Orrin McMonagall and I co-authored together called Ghosts of the Trees, where my mother is holding, uh, holding one of them. Um, it's a wonderful memory. And uh, next question, what was your first most memorable experience handling a live insect? I, I don't really have an answer to that question. Perhaps the uh, stick insect <laughs> that I just mentioned. Um, it, there, is, there is something very unique about holding an insect that is almost half the length of your own body. Uh, how long do orchid mantises live? Mantises live about a year. As I said before, that's a huge plus because once you've had the experience of raising an orchid mantis, you can then a year later move on and experience another pet. So wonderful to see as many as you can during the course of our very short human lives. What are some of your musings on the personalities of insects? Um, puppy mint mocha. Please see a video that I just did on this topic. It was one of the last three videos I uploaded here to YouTube. Any species you find has the most amusing or strongest personality to you or the most variable? I love, love, love jumping spiders. Uh, they're just so much fun to watch. They perceive the world around them in a way that humans can relate to and in a way that few other animals, few other organisms, few other uh, bugs, arthropods do. So um, watch my uh, jumping spider video that I uploaded a couple weeks ago. In your opinion, what is the most beautiful insect invert and the ugliest? Um, you know, just on principle, I don't like to pick favorites. Just on principle, I don't like to judge beauty. Um, and so default answer, the most beautiful thing to me is the next beautiful thing that I see that I've never seen before. The ugliest thing to me, if I'm going to be judgmental and negative and uh, allow it to seep into my being, is the next ugly thing that I see that I've never seen before. What do you consider the easiest bug to take care of? Um, I got these shrimp from Aquarimax here on YouTube. Uh, he has a fabulous channel. Uh, I highly recommend you check it out. I really like watching Russ's videos. And he uh, and I traded some bugs a while back and I got these shrimp from him. They're called Hawaiian red shrimp. 
Um, they, they have a name that I can never quite remember because it's very Hawaiian. It's mostly vowels and few consonants, or is it the opposite? <laughs> anyway, I think Opa something or other is their name, but they are the most low maintenance bugs I have ever kept in my life. And that I got them, I don't know, like maybe six years ago. And uh, they, they are wonderful. They're actually right over there, but I'm too lazy to, uh, I don't want to disturb their tank by moving the tank over here. Um, let's see, what a beautiful creature, where are these native to? Southeast Asia. I'd like to know more about your bug room. What does it look like? How do you keep your transient critters housed, organized, and fed? How much time a day is spent on bug care? I do have, this is Janet Balin. Thank you for your question, Janet. And uh, she just placed a big order through my website um, for the university there, and I'm very excited to be sending these along to you. Um, so I, I don't, the, the bug room, it consists of a bunch of shelves, um, with tanks that are functional tanks, not display tanks. Um, in many cases I've been using the same tank. So one example that I always use for my death's head cockroaches, I've been using the same tank for well over a decade and, um, it's not pretty, but the roaches, they love it. <laughs> so, um, uh, I mean, it's organized to the extent that uh, myself and my employees know where everything is and we can, with efficiency, pack up the orders uh, that are placed through the website in the uh, most timely fashion possible. Um, how much time a day is spent, feed, spent on bug care? Um, you know, I kind of flit down there and I just do random things all the time. Um, you know, I, I don't have it. Um, I don't have a system in place where, you know, I, we do the same things at the same times every day, at the same days of the week. Um, depending on our workflow in a given day, we will wrap our shipments up and um, then we will start to feed things. Um, we definitely hit the arachnids every week, the roaches. Um, and the millipedes in particular, the isopods, um, we can go more than a week without opening their containers. Um, although as we open containers to pull for an order, we often grab a few fish food pellets or whatever we have around, uh, jelly cups for example, and drop some of those into the tank um, just because we have the container open anyway and we see that um, the food has been consumed since the last time we fed them and then we'll mist in there too. So. Um, it just kind of depends from week to week. Um, some weeks are busier than others, and so um, it's it's somewhat random. Um, do I have any other pets? Um, I do have a, a bearded dragon that I mentioned earlier, and over the years I have other things that sort of uh, rotate in and out, but uh, mostly just a lot of bugs. Um, next one. I, as a kid, I know you collected bugs, but did you start off with one or a few little buggers and how long until your collection exploded? Um, it was really the internet and when I got on the internet that my collection exploded. So uh, that answers that. Um, can any environmental factors affect their color, increase the pinkness and orchid mantises, humidity, temperature, color of surroundings? Thanks. Um, let's see, when I, when I had an orchid mantis a few years ago, I wasn't sure which was actually the first segment. Okay. Well, yeah, on the abdomen, it doesn't matter whether you count from the tip of the abdomen in the direction of the legs or start at the legs and count. But, um, through this video that I uploaded, if you made it through the first part of this contest where I talk about the contest and watched the actual orchid mantis clips later in the video, uh, uh, you will have seen that uh, the females have six abdominal segments and the males have eight abdominal segments and um, then how to count them. So. Uh, I don't personally believe that the humidity or temperature or adding in pink flowers will make your orchid mantises more pink. Um, I've had lengthy discussions with people on that in the past, including scientists. Um, I have done trials myself over the years and I have a pretty standardized system with how I keep the mantises. And I've noticed that, you know, ghost mantises, some of them, I keep them exactly the same, all of them the same, 
the whole way through. Um, no colors in their containers. Some of them turn green, some of them turn light brown, some of them turn a grayish brown, some of them turn dark brown, some of them are a very pale, pale brown that almost looks tan. Some of them have striping. Um, I don't see in my experience that adding colors in, and I've tried it with, you know, adding pinks and purples and things in, um, I think it has more to do or everything to do with genetics. Um, but that doesn't make me wrecked. That's just the experience that I've had. Uh, and then someone says, I see all sorts of Cubaris isopods popping up in the market, uh, but I do not believe any other types of Cubaris are going to stand up to the popularity of the rubber duckies. Rubber ducky is a kind of isopod. It's gray in the middle and has like a yellow ducky yellow color um, at the, uh, the end and uh, up near the head. And uh, do I think it is a waste of resources to import any Cubaris people can find because they think they will take off in the same way that the duckies did? Um, this is Heather Jansen's question. Um, there's a lot to unpack here. Uh, first of all, I do not advocate illegally importing, smuggling things in. If you do not have permits for the things that you are purchasing from overseas, don't get yourself into trouble. Don't, um, you know, get our whole hobby into trouble by importing things illegally. Um, I will not do business with anybody who is importing, smuggling things in illegally. Um, and so, uh, you know, the, the other part of the question was, uh, you know, uh, is it a waste of resources to import any Cubaris, any other species? Um, I mean, it is the nature of our hobby. It is the nature of uh, people to want the latest and greatest things, even if they aren't as spectacular as the rubber duckies, um, other genera, another genus, another species within that same genus will be of interest to people who love isopods because there are people out there who want to keep every single species and so they always want the new one even if it's very drab it's still the new one so um it's it it wouldn't be a waste of time there would certainly be a market for it in that sense uh just because it's something novel something different and new so um it will never sell as well as uh, the rubber duckies would, um, but uh, it may it may be better as a feeder, for example, um, if it were smaller or softer bodied or something like that. Um, it, and if it's smaller, it may not, um, you know, it may make a better communal organism for cleanup duties than a larger rubber ducky would. And so, um, yeah, that, that answers that question. Uh, I think I've caught up on questions here, so, uh, we're gonna cut it there. Thank you very much for your questions. Hey, if you like me, give me one of those thumbs up and please subscribe and hit the little bell so you know when I post next. Please share me with your friends on social media. Thank you for watching.